Hello everyone, Jigo here today, it's the 712th day of waiting for new volcanic support, thanks for the data pain. So, let's jump on the volcanic train and talk about the volcanic engine, which I'm confident in calling pretty good. The volcanics are an artist type of fire power type monsters used by Axel Brody in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime. The primary focus is destruction of opponent's monster and burn damage. That is mostly done with the support of Blade Accelerator's Peasant Traps. The first wave of volcanics came out in Falls of the Breaker in May 2007 and no further support will be produced until January 2015 and the release of Secrets of Eternity. With its release, volcanics spiked in popularity and started becoming a metal of an engine. However, later down the line the engine at least in its 2015 form, was power crept out of existence. Still, a new way to play Volcanics was born, as a much smaller engine, but still very interesting to play with. Now, let's talk about each card one by one. This is a Stratos for spells and traps, nothing more to say about it. This card makes the engine work. Since it allows for additional draw power, but not only that, the engrave effect allows to send a card from the deck to the graveyard, and that, in combination with the card we'll be talking about next, makes for a very powerful combo. This card, oh this card. This is the main monster of the engine, at least when it comes to real targets. On its own, it's nothing much to talk about, just a 500 burn upon hitting the graveyard. However, in a group, this little fella provides a field wipe. Raigeki style. Shell is nothing much to talk about. In the old engine, it was the most common card to be used with reload for its own field effect. Since it can search out other copies of itself, providing ammunition for the cannon, if you will, Shell was, and still is, a pretty decent consistency boost for the engine. Well, I'll be talking about the build for both the original engine from 2015 and the new engine from 2020. Or 2021, if you will. There's a little distinction between the two, so I just need to address that. The 2015 engine was very straightforward. I know, a shocker, right? It used all the cards that were mentioned in the previous section in three copies each. Its primary focus was to cycle over Volcanic Monster with the help of Reload to draw cards. Basically, it was a draw engine with the added bonus of being able to send Scattershot to the graveyard for a quick field wipe. The new engine embraced the field wipe capabilities, with three copies of Scattershot and one copy of Reload. Its main purpose is to provide a field wipe with Reload's engrave effect. Both engines, the old and the new one, have one thing in common, and that is the field wipe, if you haven't noticed. The old engine, the one from 2015, in contrast to the new one from the 2020, also provides additional draw power, which is always very welcome. The biggest downside of the engine, be it the old version or the new one, is the amount of bricks it requires to have. In case of the new engine, all the cards in it are something you don't want to draw. At all. When it comes to the old iteration, Scattershot was something you would like not to draw into, especially in multiple copies. Also the fact the engine heavily relies on a trap card makes it slow in execution. This is somewhat mitigated by how high easily searchable reload actually is, but that's still a thing. When it comes to the old version of the engine, it was used in a variety of decks, be it Necros, Teller Knight and more. If anything, I suggest using that iteration in a more control-focused deck, which can allow use of normal summon on getting Volcanic Rocket on the field to search out Blaze Accelerator Reload. When it comes to the new version, it has seen some usage in Paleozoics, which I strongly suggest, or any rank 6 deck since Beatrice Lady of the Eternal actually exists. This allows the player to set up a Blaze Accelerator play from the graveyard during the opponent's turn. When it comes to price, it actually depends. Should one want to get the older version of the engine, something most would consider a volcanic deck core, and the lowest possible rarity, the average price would be around $22.83 or 19 euros and 5 euro cents, which is a bit. However, I covered a much more expensive engine in the past. <coughs> Should only the new engine interests you, it's going to cost you about $4.80 or 4 euros. The choice actually depends on the type of the deck this is going to be a part of. And with that burning sensation, we're done for today. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. And you can always suggest stuff for me to cover, be it decks, engines or anything in between, in the comments or on my Twitter. And with that, Jackalou is signing out. Peace!